everybody and welcome to the Diddler Cup Racing Series. It is race number 12 of this 2018 series. Our second ever season. We are inching closer and closer to the first ever Diddler Cup playoffs as we crown a new champion today. We are in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. New York, it is in Joy Stock Car Racing, ironically, Speedway. And we are here for the Notorious 187. My name is Chip Chapman. I'm joined, as always, by two men in this commentary booth. First, to my right, it is our color commentator, Lightning Lord Shivers. Oh, oh, please. Uh, you may you may call me uh, Lloydrick Thames Shivers. But you can call me Lloyd if you wish, buddy. Oh, how how on earth are you? I, I'm I'm good. I don't know how I don't know how people keep this uh, appearance up. My goodness, you are a you, you're dressed to the nines. I, I can't believe I've never seen such a okay. I, I guess you know when in Brooklyn uh, dressed like the Brooklyn cyclones about, or something. I, I don't know. I've actually I've actually decided to put on pants for this fine broadcast in the in the ultimate in the sit in the city that never sleeps. Well, I, I hope I hope it don't chafe you Driver, too much because I mean I'm kind of like. I'm all about just, you know, pantsless racing. Oh, oh, let's just say that we are that let's just say that the uh, the rear springs are not the only thing that's going to be stiff after 75 laps of racing here, partner. Well, it is uh, going to be great and of course, uh, to my left, he is uh, back for another race with us. It is hey. Bowman Jenkins. Oh, hey, get the cream out of this goddamn Hey, hey, Chip, glad to be back here. It looks like I got some stuff down the concession stand. You don't believe the kind of wacky shit they got down here. I mean, they got right nachos? Now, I paid, paid $14.99 for what appears to be a deconstructed vanilla wafer. They take the crab thing. They take, What they do is they take the slats out of there. They leave the icing behind, cram it inside of a Monopoly token piece thimble, and you got to carve it out of there and eat it that way. I, what, what in the hell? Like, I don't, I don't make no, that don't make no nothing. Thing. I don't make I don't, got, I don't understand a goddamn thing. You know, I and I'm... There. I and went I, to a food truck. Food truck claiming they're playing... The, the, the clean. They call it clean-ass Joe's is what they call it. It's a goddamn lump of meat, a hamburger, and there's no goddamn sauce on it. I don't know about no clean-ass <laughs> Joe. I like my sl I like my Joe sloppy, just like I like a little bit of loving, okay? Why is there hummus between two pieces of bread? Now, was that And not called or, a sandwich. Uh, That's a goddamn sandwich. No, no, no. They don't call it sandwiches. They call now, it a uh, platter. Now, uh, not, now, so they got to make sure that it, if they call it a sandwich, they get like, it's like a regulation thing. It's all about the, it's all about the, the ennui and the, the, sh the panache of it. And oh, now, know. uh. Now, Beaumont, my my dear friend and compatriot, we we need to tell you that uh, our our good friend Ennui, uh, that's in Jean Paul Ennui, he's uh he's in the field today. Yes, he is. He is uh got a good uh got himself what a magnificent driving specimen. A, a uh, solid qualifying effort. We are looking right down on the track. We got a one mile racetrack, a flat track, no bank turns. No angles on the dangles, no straightaways coming here. It is Ricky Walton in that Temecula dirt car who's going to lead this field of 32 uh, cars down uh, yes. to the green flag. Temecula dirt, it is 100% organically and responsibly sourced. And it's unbelievable. That, yes, it is quite unbelievable. And uh, we, got, uh, we got ourselves, I mean, you know, Aside from the fact that I, I asked for just a, a damn beer, and they asked me what kind, I just said, well, beer, you know, I don't really have to ask uh, any sort of specifics, and I was handed something that was like a, a, a pinkish purplish, it was, you know, it was some sort of a sour bomb back ale with a twist of corn mash, and I, I, I don't know, like all these different country pale ale, it was a... It was a Bangladesh pale ale. I never even heard of that. There's another food truck there that's in the shape of a Dodge Durango. And this guy is making these homegrown beers. And they're putting mayonnaise inside of pickle juice inside of vodka. And you expect people to eat this shit? Oh, yes. From the My Durango Brewery. I love the, uh, the Mambo Number no. 5. It's a real hit at the Whole Foods market. 
Whole Foods? Lord! More like a Whole Foods. You've been... I, I swear I've seen you at a Piggly Wiggly. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, uh, now that was the old lightning Lodric Shivers. I, I'm the new and improved. I've soaked up the culture of this fine metropolis. It's, it's the Big Apple, 3 a.m. Oh, my goodness. That's also the first level in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time. You son of a bitch. I'll play that down to the ice hockey rink. It is, and I think it is time to talk about our starting grid. We're going through the starting grid right now. As we mentioned to you, Ricky Walton on the pole. That's his first pole of this season. He is already in the playoffs along with Joe John Winchester on the front row, too. Playoff contenders, Paul Alcohol and Jean-Paul Henri on row number two. Jean-Paul Henri coming ever so close in the last race. Still not to get a win yet this season. Stumpy Lane, his teammate, and Jeff Shanice, last week's winner, the big winner on that track on row three. Richard Blood and Giacomo Giacomo, a couple of contenders. Giacomo Giacomo, a qualifier as well on row four. Row five has got Jim Blossoms. Great qualifying effort for him. And Jeff Gordon, the horse. On row six, it is a pair of South Tucson Youth Motorsports cars. 542 Norm Norman in the Florida Georgia Lamb number 13 car and Big Daddy Thibodeau in that Tucsonade car. Paul Walker, the double zero Nihilist Arby's car and Reverend Pastor Chavez on row seven. In row eight, it is Bowie Jessup in the Toyota Yaris sponsored by HCL and Dirk Tanaka, a playoff contender as well. He's already got a win under his belt. Smiley Van Vuren is on row number nine with El Matador, Toto Rosanna in that air supply number 75 car. On row 10, it is Vitalik Kriptoff in that number one gray bits car. And Mr. Naga's most glorious driver on the 10. Uh, Kevin Boner Pillman, he's already in the playoffs as well. He's in that Dong Rex Injector Pen car with Petrol Top Off on row 11 in the number 90 car. Both them in the playoffs. Woo ba Bali on that row with Nikolai the Soviet driving bear. These two cars had a bit of issues before on row 13. Morris Mayfield in that 69 car. Quite yes. nice. And Harry Gunn Gun in the So Stop Much Chicken 82 car. Engines. Bucket Dushad. Bucket Dushad is on row number 55 along with Doug Pork. And there is Agent Toby Keith and Cobb Salad on row 15. And in the back of the field, it is Fat Daryl in that 81 car and Ennio Sperini in the number 28 wall to wall South car. There now, I raise you have an objection. It. I raise an objection on that final row of the grid. I would figure that uh, I would figure that uh, Mr. Daryl there would go with a more body positive name as a moniker of his own. But now, I think he's I uh, he knows what he is. He's he's doing his thing. Oh yes, yes, the old uh, positive reclamation of uh, previously tawdry and uh, and virulent slurs there turned into something much more uplifting and empowering for the. Uh, for the audiences and the supporters all around them, which, by the way, I'm a very, uh, I'm very intrigued by this playoff system that we have this season. I do think more that a perhaps a supporter shield would uh, would be more uh, would be more in what line. What the hell to... are you hey, talking? I got a, I got Lord. a sword right between my pants. If you want to take a look at it. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, well, apparently I was handed a, a note saying that uh, we ain't doing a prayer because these prayers are a bit too uh, single denominational and we want to be a little, you know what, F fine, let's just go, I mean, let's just go right to those words that are kind of like the words that we usually hear but we just don't want to get sued and I guess we got to do uh, some sort of phrasing that's going to be appropriate to hear so shall we go ahead wow. and do it? Yes, uh, let's do it. Uh, let's uh, let's turn the, uh, the public address announcer over Gentlemen, I'm walking over here. That's a field. That is uh, that is some good old-fashioned Brooklyn. I think that's, that's about right. And Lee Corso in that yellow pace car is leading the field onto this track, a one-mile track. Uh, yes, a faded amber. Uh, that that wonderful uh, American Motor Stallion. That Lee Corso is uh, driving there. That I, I prefer to call him Lawrence Corso. Lee, Lee Corso right now has stolen all like 20, 48 pack of non-GMO, no-kill organic oranges, and is currently snorting them right there in the car, right there. Mm -hmm. He's showing his color here tonight. 
Oh, you don't even need a Papa Molly when you have that much, uh, when you have that much psychedelic drug works in your system through puffing that many oranges. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, he is off this track. We are going around. It is one mile around on a flat track. So reach over, strap something on it. Let's go, Dylan. It's a goddamn auto race. Hey, uh, Ricky Walton gets a nice I little hole shot. That inside line is looking mighty nice right now. Green flag, Walton. And that's the thing we're going to see. We're going to see this race go by very fast. It is a one-mile track. I'm not sure. I think I just saw someone disappear into the ether here. It might have just been the the, the old uh, the, the psychedelics I think I might have gotten fed or something. We're going to see what our... We're not going to see some high speeds here. We're going to see a lot of finesse driving. And oh, a yes. very tight track means we're going to be seeing... Some cars having to work their way. Look at that, 103 miles an hour on this one-mile course. You know, they say that uh, they say that uh, American-style gridiron football is much like uh, is much like more like ballet than uh, contact sport. And they say it's the same for uh, for stock car automobile racing. You know, the yep. footwork that these drivers require to uh, be so nimble on the on the gas pedal with such a high-powered high torque v8 engined uh stock automobile um and then the uh, the wherewithal to know when to brake and uh proper throttle technique uh, i believe uh I this kind of racing is much like a proper ballet uh one that uh, Ricky walton slams into a bunch of cars and we get something cool i mean something cool would be great and we're seeing them come around at 103 miles an hour they are really tightly packed it's a small track and there's not going to be a lot of ra a lot of uh, a lot of room to maneuver, so you got to make your moves very carefully. And I think as the field starts to spread out, lap traffic is going to be a bit of an interesting battle. As Ricky Walton's going to try to protect this lead for as long as he can. Yes, that's very fascinating. Now, with this uh, with this so-called lap traffic, are they required to uh, to yield for uh, absolutely for not? Oh well, that just seems quite quite unsporting. You you think everyone's gonna be a bunch of asshole drivers? There are asshole drivers every single week. You expect them to stop now? Uh, oh 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 oh! There. I know oh. Ricky oh no! Go. Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Lordrick, you probably don't even. You probably got yourself like one of those fixed fixed speed bicycles, don't you? Oh, only the most fixed of speed bicycles. I don't even know what that means, but what okay. The, what kind of fat tire bicycle is that? My God, the thing. No, like no, that's one of the beers. Pounds. He was trying to explain that to us earlier. Fat tire is a beer, not like a bicycle. Mm -hmm. You I mean mean's a, a beer out of a tire? I don't, I don't know, but it's Ricky no, Walton is God leading damn. this race still five laps in, and you can see how uh, how tough it's going to be to move into position. We're seeing a lot of these cars just trying to make their moves. We're seeing it is Richard Blood racing alongside Paul Alcohol trying to make a move. The outside line may not be the way to go, especially with these turns coming so quickly. Yes, uh, this is a this is a very fast circuit. You know, the the, the average speeds are not as high. They're only 104.765 miles per hour. Although, hmm, excuse me, I, I'm so used to. Uh, I feel like. Uh, I feel like this uh, race, uh, to embrace its truly multinational and diverse grid, should uh, maybe perhaps never the average lap speeds in kilometers per hour. Why would we do that? that? That involves math. I got I got some dudes writing down some numbers on paper. They can barely count as it is. I'm just happy with whatever whatever sort of facts I'm being handed. I'm just saying, if if the prayer was non-denominational, I think the speed should be non-denominator. I think it should be based on wind speed. You know what? Yeah, uh, hey, uh, yes, hey, hey, here's, my, here's my thing. You know why this track is so flat? Built by a flat earther. Built mm -hmm. by a flat earther. Yep. Well, yep. It's, uh, that's not uncommon you know along these days. Walks, I hope it walks to the edge and comes around. And it's we're a, seeing a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of movement. Ricky Walton's still hanging into it. Jim Blossoms has moved his way up into uh, into third place. The genetically yeah. modified Jim Blossoms pissing off a lot of people. Now, now this uh, this James Blossoms fellow. Uh, now, now, what is the deal with the bandages on? Him? Uh, he needs those to live. Oh, they're not yes. a fashion statement. He is he has found himself in 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 the shit quite a bit. He is the he is the homicidal 
suicidal. Uh, genetically modified Jim Blossoms. And he is uh, trying to hold on to third place with Richard Blood uh, rich, uh, reaching down his neck. And look at them. They, they really spread up. Ricky Walton does not take that proper line. We can see it's kind of just marked there on the track as they, they got to they gotta maneuver these turns so well. You kind of just you try to hug the corner. You firmly embrace the corner like a like a loved one. You you embrace uh you embrace you embrace open relationships. You embrace yeah. polyamory, and you embrace uh, the the swinger lifestyle that is becoming all so like common. Polyamory and postamory and I mean, amory oh okay. And, amory, and don't I forget mean, monopoly. I mean, if that means like if that means like you know, I'm just pumping into a whole bunch of different people. Then I mean, I get I, that don't sound too bad. I don't I don't now know if I'm that, gonna have now. Now, uh, now, Charles, that is quite the spirit. I don't think anyone's called me Charles since I... Oh, holy hell. But we got a lead change here as Jim Blossoms, the 41 Plasma Train Car, has um, taken the lead from Ricky Walton, and they are racing side by side. And that's going to be five big points for Jim Blossoms. Now it's interesting that the uh, the grandstands of this uh, this this stock car racing speedway have been uh, have been designed to perhaps model the uh, the uh, the concourse the uh, the grandstands of the of the old Ebbets Field, which was of course the stadium used by the old professional baseball team, the Brooklyn Dodgers. They're bringing a bunch of mist mystic things out there just to keep them just to keep them warm out there too. And, and interesting interesting thing here, we're seeing Smiley Van Buren, Vitalik Kryptov. And Cobb Salad might have been involved in something. Van Buren is 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 out of this race. We're not entirely sure. That might have happened um, early on. I don't even know. We're gonna have to go ahead and see what in the world flag, happened with them. But uh, Vitalik Kryptov is two laps down. Cobb Salad a lap down. Uh, Cobb Salad was at the back of the field to begin with anyway. Vitalik Kryptov he was in the middle of the pack. Smiley Van Buren was in the middle of the pack. So we're gonna have to find out what in the world happened with them. He might be in the pits. He might. Well, uh, you know, Smiley Van Buren is out. He's on the trailer. And uh, Cobb Salad, he's back on that track. I think uh, Vitalik Kryptov, neither of these cars in the pits. They're just kind of in that pack of cars. You know, that's the thing. You can get down a lap so quickly because it's only a one-mile track. And there yeah, we're seeing. Was there is uh, last week's winner, Jeff Shanice. One of the 11 drivers all ready to qualify for the Diddler Cup playoffs. The first independent car without a racing team. And there's been a lot of talk, a lot of rumor and, rumor and innuendo about uh, all sorts of uh, potential that, that he can, he can uh, unleash in these playoffs. And it might invent, eventually uh, look into uh, spelling a, a, nice, uh, a nice sponsorship, maybe a nice racing team for him. I like, uh, I, I, of course, uh, I loved uh, the, the latest Fox Explained on a rumor and innuendo. Uh, I found it a very fascinating watch with my with my good friend's Netflix account. And we're seeing something interesting here. Uh, looks like Bowie Jessup is heading to Pit Road. Not entirely certain what happened. I don't. I didn't see anything going on with that car, but he is just. I don't sound like a healthy motor either. I'm not entirely certain what is going on there. We're going to well, see now, he's folks, being called guess, into his pit stall. I guess you could say Bowie well, Jess well, up has now Bowie Jess downed. <laughs> Gentlemen, I, I got to say here, the big thing is that they're using, they're not using Bebus fuel. They're for a more environmentally friendly thing. They've got a big silo full of corn and the pit crews are actually having to crush up the corn to make an E80 ethanol right there in the pit. You know, and I thought they were making, and I thought they were making like, you know, organic wine or something like that. I thought they were making like wine in the infield because that would have made sense, you know, like some, some, some craft wine, but you're saying they're just crushing up, they're crushing up corn with their own feet. And here, here I am thinking they're making kettle corn at the fair. You know, okay. I was trying to buy some myself and I don't understand, you know, all of a sudden it's rancid. I took a bite into it, it was rancid. I tried to shit in my pants, and then, you know, all of a sudden, I'm just told, you know, apparently, they don't like it when you go to the bathroom outside. Now, see, uh, this brings me back to an old, uh, an old uh, Midwestern proverb. It says, uh, city boys, city girls use vibrators, but Diddler Cup racing drivers make do. Mountain Dew. Absolutely. Mixed with alcohol. 
That's a fine southern cocktail nowadays, much like a mint julep. Well, we were look. I, I'm not entirely. Beaumont, I'm a little worried here. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I had a, I had the strangest dream, and I felt like it was just all hallucination. But I dreamt that I took a, a nice, relaxing day trip to the great uh, eastern island nation of Japan, and from there I was fed so many large uh, confectionery dreams. I mean, I swear I could have sworn. Lord, that happened. We went to Tokyo. We ate a giant cinefist. I mean, you you took you took the brunt of that damage. You ate a lot of that cinefist. I, I I couldn't hold my own. I was I was handing I was handling it with the frosting. I at least was just you know, just just spreading the frosting on my own tongue, and then repeat after I swallowed. But uh, I, I'm I'm a little worried about you, Lord. I, I you know this ain't this ain't what we're used to seeing here. From you. This might be some jet lag here. I mean, I I didn't go to Japan for obvious reasons. With them increasing pressures and me without my guns at the airport. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think uh, I think you would have much enjoyed the uh, the the finer sides of some of the uh, the more out of the way regions, which even though in an in a densely populated nation such as uh, what the locals call refer to as the Han, uh, I think you would have much enjoyed some of the more rural and wooded areas. Well, Oh, was this so much oh not looking good. There is some smoke pouring out of Richard Blood's car. What is going on there? I didn't see any sort of a wreck, but he is oh. he's staying on the track. This is not it's good. That corn. It's that corn that clogs you up. That corn clogs you up and well, then what's he is back he is all backed up and it looks like no he's gonna have to visit Pit Road. He is come out there and pick the corn out of there because it said for recycling. He's below corn the right yellow line and he is causing yeah, he's gonna have to go into the pit lane. Richard Blood, I don't know what in the world happened. That's just smoke or steam or... Now that's just steam. Steam from the steamed pistons that he was driving oh, along. Oh, fuck this you! Get out of here! Well, Jim Blossom, still your leader, opened up a 1.5 second lead over Ricky Walton, who was all alone, and... Uh, Behind him, it is Paul Alcohol, Giacomo, Giacomo, their teammates of War Machine Racing. Now, and are we not just convinced that Richard Blood was just uh, trying to test out a new experimental onboard vaping device on his automobile? No, I think that's what happens when you actually try to put crushed up corn in your, in your gas tank. Usually it's uh, usually it's liquefied. I've I've had no success of uh, of uh, trying to run deconstructed. Well, ethanol. someone should have told our officials that, and they clearly didn't know. They're just saying, oh, it's a, it's a more eco eco friendly fuel. It's made of corn. It's like, all right, fine. We crush up some corn. We, we, we push it all over the gas tank, and look what happens. Someone someone's car just got ruined. How many people people have gone to the pits? I mean, there's, only, there's, only, there's not a lot of things I know about corn other than it's delicious, it's good grilled, and you poop it right back out. That, that's all I really know about it, all right? Actually, it's much its much like a fine fiber, just like the fiber that bonds all of us as automobile racing enthusiasts. From the days of the old Vanderbilt Cup to the pinnacle and the prime of the Diddler Cup racing series. Lord, they are selling re-evaporated water out here. Oh yes, that it actually gives you the the peak level of hydration when it is uh, it is evaporated and then recondensed and then re-evaporated once again, and all that re-evaporated water is just packaged right into a responsibly sourced and 100% recyclable. I'm carton. so confused about uh, you're, you're uh, you know I saw a bottle of that stuff is like seventeen dollars. Re-evaporated water. You know, okay. I was walking in here. You know, we we had our we had our fan our fan expo where they got to come in and meet the drivers. Somebody came up to me. I was you know signing autographs, taking pictures, and everything as we all were. Someone asked me if he can get the race on vinyl. I don't even know what to say to that. I don't even I understand. To, yeah, I swear to God, we are one Ja Rule appearance away from Fire Festival too. Good Lord. Uh, we're yes, seeing a bunched up pack of cars. Jim Blossoms has taken the lead. Head. No, thank you. Oh well, now the well now you see here on the outside lane this uh, 
Giacomo, Giacomo, a fine, uh, fine, fine driver of Italian descent, descent uh, much like many of our fine people in Brooklyn, New York. Um, he is, uh, he is Sayushe, uh bringing the fire to this festival at the front of the grid. <laughs> I, I don't like that laugh. That, that's that. There's. Well, I, I'm worried. I'm worried we're gonna have a weather delay because there is just a whole lot of smug coming in. But uh, nonetheless, 27 laps into this race, Giacomo Giacomo has raced his way into four into second place, and he just left the launch of the old driver. He just got a whole shot off that turn, and is racing right and right into uh, contention to try to tra uh, track down the leader Jim Blossoms, who so far has taken the lead in the early stages from our pole sitter Ricky Walton. And uh, no one has really challenged him for that lead at this point. Here's the Kiss War Machine, number four, driven by Giacomo. Giacomo, of course, made the playoffs. Jim Blossoms of the uh, in the lead, yet to make the playoffs. Uh, hasn't had the best of seasons just yet. He got one win last year. Could he match it this year? Remember, one win in the regular season. That's the first 14 races. Will get you into the playoffs. Yes, it's like an extensive, uh, you know, some people uh, look down on it and say it's nothing but pure gentrification, but I see it as uh, redeveloping the uh, the competitive landscape of the Diddler Cup racing series and uh, and helping it grow into a more thriving and prosperous environment for all. And actually, this is kind of backfiring it, firing as Giacomo. Giacomo is just, uh, he's opened up his lead over Paul Walker in third, and Paul Alcohol has kind of backed off that as well. Ricky Walton and Stumpin' Lane in fourth and fifth front in front of them. But uh, we're seeing that the field's starting to really uh, starting to really spread out. And what we're seeing now is our leader, Jim Blossoms, approaching lap 30. And uh, he now, is Jim, starting to Jim, see some my, lap down traffic. Jim, here's my thing, though, with all these cars running ground up corn as their fuel. I mean, Jim Blossoms is running on a completely different fuel. You don't think he's like intentionally making himself bleed and put it in, you know kind of siphoning into the engine to make it run faster i mean all these drivers are running on corn in some form or another uh you know i saw some people taking cans of creamed corn that otherwise would have just sat uh unused on on a food pantry shelf and they just kind of poured that in there i saw somebody uh use corn oil like the mazzola kind of stuff uh I've seen. I've even seen. Uh, I've even seen. So ghastly as it may be, some people just dump high fructose corn syrup into their cars. I mean, I the, the rule was it's got to be corn. It's corn as a fuel, so they're just kind of figuring themselves out. I think Richard Blood just tried to use some burnt corn can kernels from popcorn, like the kind that you never eat when you when you put a, put a bag of popcorn in the microwave. And there's always what those about? burnt kernels or those uncooked ones. He just went and poured a whole bunch of them into his tank, and that's what happened. And the whole son bitch just just blew up a smoke, and he blew, blew an engine. I, I got uh, even Fat Daryl tried to cram a corn CD. They even tried to get John Davis to fly him in to put him inside of the gas tank. Corn itself with the K. I mean, the the rules are completely are, are wide open to that. And Jim the Blossom. The ingredient is corn. Absolutely. They're trying to figure out how to use corn in the best corn way. And Giacomo, Giacomo hanging on to second place. Paul Walker right there. That's a battle for second right now as it's a five-second lead. Jim Blossoms, bar barring any sort of issue. Uh, yeah, 542 Norman, of course. Uh, he is a kid, so he, of course, used candy corn. And uh, we're seeing how that works out for him. He is uh, not having a good run right now. Uh, actually, yeah, he's running in, a, in ninth place. Yeah, I take it back. He's, he's running he's a, in ninth, embracing our embracing uh, the the potential that America's youth uh, so blissfully has to offer. He is. He, he, uh, you said he was twelve years old. Thirteen years old, just like the number on the car. Thirteen. That's uh, that that is astonishing. He is. It's not incredibly able illegal. To drive a he is not even able to drive a civilian car. And yet here he is racing something that's far more powerful and dangerous and racing with quite proficiency. It gets much people are bold enough to be as parental figures. Yeah, we're talking about like we're, we're talking potential rookie of the year candidate. Uh, as far as points goes, he's sitting in in, in the hunt of uh, of the playoffs. I mean, you know, uh, 
a good another another good performance here and there. If he doesn't get a win, he can still potentially be a top points, uh, be up on points and make the playoffs. Right now, uh, our our top five uh, racers who would make their way in, aside from the eleven winners, Jean Paul Henri, Richard Blood, Morris Mayfield, Smiley Van Buren. His race is done today, so he's going to be moving down. Five forty two Norman is in sixteenth place as far as that goes. And this could easily be a way for him to move up, especially with a top 10 finish. <coughs> and Richard Blood, of course, is out of this race. So he's going to be, uh, he's going to gain some ground on him as well. And these last few races are getting so tight, it's going to be a whole bunch of craziness. <coughs> Pardon me, gentlemen. Uh, if, you, if you will excuse me, I believe my, my stomach is, uh, is quite a bit unsettled. I may need to... I may need to use the lavatory here for about a, just a few minutes if you will just... Uh, all, just all right, you, you gotta, you, well, don't go outside. Apparently I got yelled at for trying to uh, shit outside, I'll, I'll so I wouldn't they, do that. I hope, they didn't, I hope they didn't import that goddamn Japanese toilet where you squat. Boma, what the hell is going on with him? I, mean, I don't want to say know anything. What the hell happened? He came back from Japan. I don't believe this I shit. I went with him. I didn't see nothing. He was just normal after that. You were perfectly fine. You don't think the Yakuza got him? I don't know. It's, that's like brainwash. I've seen that Wrestling Society X time the one time. I know what I happens with there. They brainwash them, and all of a sudden they're asking for piranha death matches. I, I seen it too. I mean, I saw, I saw the episode where they went to Japan to Top Cock, by the way, great episode. But seriously, like, half the people died in that show. Absolutely. They're looking at, I you know what? what the hell's happening. You know, I don't know. Right now we're looking at two independent cars, Wu Bai Bala in uh, 13th place, and Jeff Shanice in 12th. Uh, they are holding their own. Wu Bai Bala, uh, you know. May not, may not have the car to win it. He's gonna have to make take some chances late in this race, or hope for a uh, hope for a bit of an uh, issue. But everyone seems to be taking this uh, this track pretty well. It's a it's a nice flat track, and we're seeing it. But uh, you know, 13th place, solid run. Wu Ba Bale starting to figure out things after a bit of a rocky start to the Get season. This goddamn shit off me! I'm gonna run out here naked if I have to. What the hell is in that damn center fist? Uh, I, I, I apologize for just showing up so damn late here. I had to rip everything off. I cannot believe what in the world possessed me to even put on that crap here when I got here. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to ask about the suspenders and the really, really short, long pants, like the ones that they ain't shorts, they ain't cutoffs, but they sure as hell weren't pants because they weren't touching your, your, your feet. Like, no, they no, were no. just weird, and I don't know. And oh, I don't even know how they got. They were touching something. Oh yeah, I, I I feel like I feel like I'm so unclean just having to wear that shit. And now I'm gonna have to shower twice a day. Yeah, like and please, uh, and, and sh you know, I, I don't know if that's a fake this, beard this, or whatever, this, but you probably should give yourself a shave afterwards as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean goddamn, it's like half that shit's corduroy. I want the full roy, goddamn it. <laughs> that's, that's right, you want the full roy. You don't want to go half-assing it here. <laughs> Absolutely, go 40 laps wanna... in of this 75 half lap half race. Half you want to go old Roy, old Roy dog food. Yeah. You know, that's that's what that's what you have to eat when you're struggling to survive from race to race, from paycheck to paycheck, just like I they think do. I saw in that on a food truck. Series. They're no. dumping in dog and cat food and they serve it in your shoe. No doubt about that. Well, I, that that sounds like some sort of a uh, fancy eating. You know, there's there's an eatery that tried to serve some of that, and I gotta tell you, lines out the window, or out the door. No, out the window because you have to enter through the window. That's like one of them fancy things. It's like a speakeasy. It's like it's like one of them breaking and entering themes where you got to break and enter into the restaurant and then cook your own it, food. And I then thought it was sit. just like that wrestling tag team that had that door that just stood out there in the middle. Oh, maybe. I love them. The breaking and entering gang. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, always pounding ass. That's of course. Right. But no, like, that's the thing. Like, I don't get it. Like, every, all these... There's all I'm these cons. I just want... I want to go... I want to get myself a good steak... I want to right. maybe get myself get some it. mashed potatoes. I want to just get myself maybe like a burger. I want I want some barbecue. Brooklyn. I don't get want Brooklyn, barbecue to be neatly. Finished. You know, Brooklyn barbecue is the biggest thing of bullshit. Damn right. Damn right. Bear How me about brother. you find yourself a goddamn Applebee's with some shit on the walls? For right. Hey. Absolutely. Bro you know, I was go I was trying to get myself. You know, I wanted to get myself. You know, it was, uh, I was we were in we we got in late. You know, it wasn't a lot open. You know, I wanted to get myself something to eat that wasn't too far from where we're staying. So I wander in, and there's this, there's this again, there's this line around the block, and I'm like, okay, well maybe the food's good, 
Maybe a lot of stuff's not open. You know, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm all right. I got to wait in this line. I want to find out what's going on. People were literally. This was like they remodeled a house. They remodeled a restaurant to look like an actual house with like a home kitchen and a living room. And the oh, whole good. concept is you 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 act like you're breaking and entering. You 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 enter the house. You sneak into the kitchen. You cook up yourself something and you eat it on the couch. And then you gotta get out and you take some stuff along with you. And like. I'm not entirely certain that I didn't just break a whole bunch of laws and break into an actual family's house. Now I saw I saw one time I saw a I saw a daggone uh, upscale dive bar esque Shoney's if you can believe such shit. But the thing is, it was just mine like a regular old Shoney's. That's crazy. I mean, I like Shoney's. Don't get me wrong. I'll go for a breakfast buffet right. and, or three. Damn right. That's right. I'll go for a breakfast buffet at five. You know, that's 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 the trick of Shoney's. You show up for the breakfast buffet, and you just stay through lunch and dinner. That's right. And no, you just I hope they forget to take it all in. You hope they just leave it out there. It's still good. There's lots that are warming it. Gentlemen, I'll have you know as well, it looks like I saw another food truck, which was, re which was remodeled after an old USPS van. Still running on. It looks like a Froyo stand where they pour it all into your belly button that charge by weight. No toppings either, some bitch. What? Uh, yo, how? What's the point oh, of fro what's the point of frozen yogurt? What's the point of froyo if I ain't gonna just load it up with toppings and make it absolutely unhealthy, despite it being oh, a healthy alternative? You know, pouring belly button in your belly but pouring your excuse me, pour. Oh my God, I can't. What in the hell did they slip me in that damn cinnamon? I don't know, man. But you were, you were, you were, you were like a whole other person. Oh, no, I was oh, really no, concerned about please, you, man. Please do not tell me I did not say anything, something stupid. Or I'm sure. Nah, no, no, uh, you're fine. I think. Man. Yeah. Let's just All go I with gotta that. Say, pouring yogurt in your belly button sounds like that kind of kick of shit darlings in you. Absolutely. Well, again, Giacomo, Giacomo being raced for the second place with Paul Walker in that Nihilist Arby's double zero car. They are both about seven seconds off the leader, Jim Blossoms. Oh, my God! Just... Jim Blossoms has moved in! Bala has moved into the top ten. He has moved up to ninth. He is putting on a good show here. Again, that seems to be a pack of cars racing for sixth place. Let's head over back through the field there. We're seeing him come around. Yeah, that's a nice, tightly packed uh, <coughs> group of cars. Ken's Cobb Salad in the back. He is a lap down as his boo with Jessa. Well, Cobb Salad's two laps down. <coughs> but Jean-Paul Henri, sixth place. He is fending off our pole sitter, Ricky Walton, El Matador Toto Rosanna, and Wu Babala, who have both worked their way through the field and up to the front. <coughs> and that is quality points for Wu Babala. John Paul Henri, again, you know, we're, we got to see somebody make some moves. It looks like this could be the race that Jim Blossoms, <clears throat> you know, and I think this might be the best course for him. He was able to get out away from anybody else. There was no way he was going to run into anything, no way he could endanger anybody. He just, <clears throat> yeah, maybe all he needed course. was just to just make it impossible to collide with something. That's that's damn right, and and most of all, he has pro proven himself a danger, uh, uh, the least effective danger to to the most important person himself. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, he is. Uh, he may have just figured out the mystery behind putting the corn in your car. They put. Please tell me, did they not put corn in the car? Well, that was that was the regulation. We are here in Brooklyn, uh, which you know they're 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 suddenly turning over a new leaf. They're trying to be a little more eco-friendly, and they found a new fuel alternative to our Ow. usual high octane Bapis. And uh, they said, well, look, it's just got to have a good percentage of corn in it. And they didn't. I'm, I'm like, well, what does that mean? Is it like a few? Is it like its own fuel or something like that? And they're like, I don't. And then I asked. I asked our interns who went to the meeting because I couldn't be asked. I couldn't be Can bothered. You believe this crock of and they shit, said, I don't man. fucking know. Just put some corn in your tank. And I was like, well, okay. Well, there's a whole lot of different ways to do that. And said, well, let them figure it out. So we had Richard Blood, who, who made some microwave popcorn and put the unpopped kernels in his car. And he blew an engine. Oof, <coughs> you're done. Smiley Van Vuren, I, I think he just. Um, he did popcorn chicken. He, like went, he, pop he, he went with popcorn chicken. Exactly, with the with the sponsor, and he retired the car. That car is in last place. That did not work out. 
Jim Blossom seems to have figured it out. I don't know what he put in there. He put in his own blood. He might have put in his own blood with some corn. He's, he is operating <laughs> on 2017 synthetic. And he's got I a lot know. of CCs of that. Uh, yeah, Paul Walker in second you. place, I understand, is running on high fructose corn syrup. Absolutely 542 not. Normans used candy corn. That's right. That's highly combustible. I mean, uh, <clears throat> granted, there's plenty of candy corn to go around, especially this time of year. Uh, mostly left uh, untouched, uh, unconsumed, uh, in a, in candy bowls all around this great country. Nah, but I don't know about you. You, 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 you get you get yourself a, buck, a bowl of candy corn. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you put it out at a party, I am, I know exactly where I'm hanging out. You know, people want to talk and be social, they got to come to me, they got to come to the candy corn, because I am not leaving that. I don't want all the good ones to be taken while I'm wa watching. I think you know, with Harry Gunn, he said, you try to give Harry Gunn a vegetable, and I swear to God, he will kill you. I think he's just going to race for the one th round of fuel to go just run out there, and then he's going to try and pick up the car and wheel this way across there like when you did when you realize you're too old for little tax in that little coop. Agent Coba Keith running there in the midfield down in 17th place has actually used his fake corns. That's amazing and that's interesting because uh, <clears throat> it's actually doing all right. He's uh, he's uh, there right, in, right behind uh, uh, two laps down his, his teammate Cobb Salad who again already qualified. He won 8 Daytona 500 oh, and Jeff fine. Gordon the horse in 19th right behind there. Bucket Dew Shine in 18th in that Taco Baco car. And we are more than two-thirds done with this this uh, race. <clears throat> Jim Blossoms, your leader. Damn, that is awesome. Jim Blossoms leading in Brooklyn. I mean, I don't care much for the hipster aesthetic bullshit in this city, but I tell you what, if Jim Blossom can win here in New York, man, that's going to put him on like, <laughs> on like, he's going to put him in Times Square, man. I mean, it he's says if like he can make, hero. if he can win it here, he can win it everywhere. And stump in lane. Jim Blossoms, just by the way, he talks electronically. They're comparing him to the next marshmallow. I don't even know what that means, but all right. I, I don't know either. I, 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 just I, tell you, I tell you what, if he if he wins here in New York City, he's going to be a bigger uh, he's going to be a bigger phenomenon. I tell you, hell, he'll be a bigger phenomenon than Eli Manning was. You say he can win in New York City? <clears throat> Absolutely. Stump and Lane we're watching right now. He just gave up fourth place to Big Daddy Thibodeau. The DWI Absolutely. cars, uh, again, Richard Blood out of this race. But uh, Lane and Henri in fifth and seventh, they're running pretty dang good. I understand uh, at least one of them put whiskey in there because it's a corn base. Now that's what we're talking about That's here. a you smart a idea because you know what? There's still alcohol in there, which you need to burn off. That's damn right. That's a that's, smart that's idea. What that's what we should have done the whole time. It's just having fuel by whiskey. I mean, it might be something we look into for next season. I don't know. I mean, we we kind of like the. Uh, I mean, our beef sponsorship is is very good, but you know, maybe maybe they're gonna expand their uh, their empire. Maybe they're gonna find a new yeah. product. That's a new renewable fuel I can get into. I mean, it ain't much for that kind of bull crap. But you know, if you can make a car, if you can make a stock car run on whiskey and have to run just fast, so I'm all mm. for it. I mean, you I know who runs on whiskey? Me. Hey. Now, if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for these cars, these mighty machines. Damn right. Damn right. Paul Walker has taken second place from Giacomo Giacomo. Great, uh, great uh, effort by Paul Walker in that double zero. He is absolutely in the hunt for the playoffs. Currently in 18th, 18th, 18th place. Yes, Momo. I'm, I'm seeing a food truck. It looks like it got repositioned from couple parts from parts unknown auto unknown auto parts looks like that what they're doing is they are serving up guacamole on a piece of 11 and a half by eight and a half by 11 office paper and they're folding it and you got to eat it with the paper that doesn't sound that what sounds awful kind of, what kind of tortilla chips are you going to make out of an eight by five by 11 paper you're going to get paper cut that way absolutely you're gonna get trying hurt. that. Paper, you shouldn't get yourself hurt. I don't know if you can deep fry office paper, man. That sounds like it wouldn't even taste good, even if you do double deep fry it. You know, I was looking for, Fred. you know, I was looking for something simple. I was, you know, I was so happy. I heard there was a stand that sold hot dogs, and I was like, you know what? Fine. Maybe not my first choice, but god damn it, that just sounded fantastic right now. 
And then I realized right. they spelled hot, H-A-U-T-E, and I was like, I don't even know what this is, all right? And I just, I lost my, I lost my appetite, and I just kind of went away. Ain't that like that, ain't that like that, uh, that old wrestler dude, Hot Depp and She? I think so. Remember, me man. and my grandma used to watch Hot Depp and She. That's right, that's right, man. Speaking of Hot Depp and Cheese, you know what I can go for some right now? Some Hot Depp and Cheese. That's right. All over some tortilla chips sprinkled with some shredded pulled pork. You think we're going to find that here? No. Peppers? No. Hell no. <clears throat> take this crappy-ass Brooklyn barbecue. You might as well just like, you might as well take one of your brioche buns and just uh, drop a big old deuce right in between and serve it on a platter with some daggone pickles chips. Yeah, if I'm... Here's the thing. <clears throat> if there is bread with my barbecue... It's basically a half a loaf of sliced white bread, and guess what? I'm using the white bread as a napkin as well. That's damn right. It's uh, and, it's, and that beef is gonna be it, that beef the pork is gonna be so tender, it just falls off the bone. And it's gonna be sopping. It's just gonna be sopping and sloppy, and it's just gonna get everywhere. And you know what? You go and you don't care what you're wearing. You just probably are throwing that. You're going to throw that shirt out right after you've sucked all the juices that you've spilled onto it. Oh, no, hell, I'm going to wear that thing out. That's a badge of pride right there. That lets everybody know, hey, you got to done eat some damn good barbecue. Maybe I want to go where he was going. That is no doubt. You see a bunch of guys who are just all talking in a circle wearing a bunch of stained barbecue shirts, and they're usually trading their trade secrets. Oh, Jim Blossoms is heading to Pit Road. I'm interested oh, no. what's going on here. Oh, is this a no. green flag stop? We're finding out here. <clears throat> and get them fuel. That had they crushed the corn. I, I can't get over the fact that they just like they took the corn and they said they passed it off and said it's deconstructed. Like what the fuck does that mean? You know, I never understood corn on the cob. Like it all it's naturally like that. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't like you can't like you can't call you can't cut my arms off, call them a chip. And then put them back on me and call me Chip altogether. Don't work that way. <clears throat> Jim Blossoms still back on the track as your race leader. However, Giacomo, Giacomo, probably topping off. He was probably topping off for fuel. As we're seeing a couple cars. Yep, yeah, it looks like they're going to have to fuel up for the finish of this race. Ricky Walton, Uba Bale, Jean Paul Henri, and 542 Norman are cycling yes. through. El Matador Toto Rosanna is your race leader. Now that's an interesting strategy. Woo by Bali, of course, his team is known for the we ain't pitting strategy, but We uh, ain't pitting So so the, what is that so what are they doing there? You know, I don't know one lick a bit, but we're uh we're seeing an interesting thing here. We're just seeing a lot of cars opting to stay out. Now here comes El Matador Toro Zen. He took his five points, now he's gonna pit. We're hopefully gonna see everybody cycle through. This looks like green flag fueling stops. <clears throat> It's like we got a uh, petrol top off. Paul Alcohol is your leader right now in the 35 car. I'm assuming only because he is yet to pit. And they're going to have to contend with some of these cars making their way back onto the racetrack as well. A one mile track, that's not a lot of room to get in and out of pit lane. No, it ain't. It's remember the, the, there's it's so much of this this city and it's just Oh man, some places that I, I just you know I, I'm just getting word I'm get, actually getting passed over here. Uh, Uba Bale uh, during his pit stop, he threw a couple of corn dogs in his tank. So I mean, yeah. I thought that I thought they were running on corn chips today. Oh, it might have been corn chips. I I, I know there was a, there was a corn dog getting thrown into something, but look at this chaos as cars are getting back onto the racetrack and trying to pit. And Paul Alcohol is your race leader right now with Jeff Shanice eight seconds behind as we're seeing a handful and this is just going to keep going a little little a little wacky here as and there is Paul Alcohol taking his five points and he's already in the playoffs but he is going to go ahead and hit pit road 10 laps to go this is getting very interesting we're going to take a look at Jeff Shanice you know, I bet the people down here don't even watch college football like they do in the South. Or even worse yet, I bet they root for no game. Well, I heard something about saying there was New York's college football team, and they called them Syracuse, and I'm just like, that don't, none of that sounds right at all. Oh, that? Eight laps to go. We got Paul Alcohol and out in front. 
I know Ivy League football was big like before the two world wars, but now come on. Yeah, I don't get that at all. And, uh, yep, Jeff Shitty, Paul Alcohol back on the track. <clears throat> Jim Blossoms back into second place. And we're just seeing him cycle through. And there it is, Jim Blossoms. It was all green right. flag stops all around. Everybody seems to have made their way. Jeff Shanice back on the track still. He is he's back in seventh. The undercut seemed to work there. All right, let's do this thing. Jim Blossom just a few laps away Seven from pulling off a hell of a laps to go. Seven laps to go. Excuse me, eight laps to go. Eight laps to go on this one. This is lap number 68 of this 75 lap race. And uh, right. Paul Walker in that double zero having a good day too. Cobb Salad back into pit road is been a rough day for him. Yeah, Cobb Salad usually not a favorite around these parts. No, not at all. I mean, they're just, they're confused by the hard boiled egg. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're just uh, they're just wondering where the uh, the kale is and the quino. I don't get no quino. I don't understand. I just need some corn. That's right. That's right. I'll tell you what is has Jim Blossom won a race since the accident? I can't. Uh, I no, like not uh, well. He 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 won the accident last season. He won. He came back and won the race the, the week after. But that's his only ever win. Damn. So yeah, this will true. be a huge victory for Jim Blossoms, the six dollar man who has been put that's together right. basically right. by carny folk. That's with the right. same Just sort like of dexterity and know-how as you'd put together one of them scramblers. That's what Brooklyn used to be, man. Before they got all these all these damn young bucks, these damn hipsters. Yeah, now I just want to go back to Kona Island and go to a Nathan's and, and just choke down some hot dogs like I'm that chestnut filler. Woo! Now that's a good Six sport. That is a sport that, that, that New York should have embraced. They've got a champion every summer when they crown a winner. Now that is a sport. You don't got no New York Knicks going and sucking up the place. You don't got no 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 Giants and Jets that are that are that are just embarrassing you. You got a champion every season. You damn sure don't have no damn Yankees. Less and said about that shit. Me high enough. And Blossom's got a 7.8 lead. It has been elementary. He's just had to keep the car together. He's had to keep his body together, literally. And I think he is bound to do it. There are three laps to go as we come around again. Three oh, miles man. left to drive in. He's gonna cross it one more time. That was the white line. That makes the race of that makes the lap official. All right, there we go. Jim Blossoms has just got to hold it for a couple more corners. Two, uh, three laps to go for Jim Blossoms. You at the food truck, Chip? God oh. damn it! Oh man! You got another place that looks like a hollowed out Dodge minivan, Dodge caravan that's selling chocolate chip cookies, which are made with almond flour and grass. Is there any Dummy? chocolate in those chocolate chip cookies? raisins what what the hell what the i'll be a son of a bitch if i'm having a raisin in my goddamn cookie they, right. they say they're aged grapes oh sorry aged grapes are you kidding me you know what the only kind of aged grapes i want to drink is in a is in a bottle of md 2020 absolutely how about the ones in my pants i mean you want to feed those to somebody i mean maybe Darlene drinks those i don't know yeah. All I know is that's where P is stored, and uh, that's all I need to know. Well, we are at two laps to go. Jim Blossoms seems to have this in the bag. Going through the field as they finish this, it looks like Jim Blossoms takes the white flag and the $6 man driving the number 41 for Plasma Train. They couldn't get the themselves a win in that coming. 41 car last season. But they're going to have a winner. It's going to be a second ever victory for the $6 man, number 41, GM Blossoms, as but he comes around. Do you think he could dry, be all right if he just crashed into victory lane tonight, baby? We got a winner. It is Jim Blossoms.
the 41 Ford Pinto sponsored by Plasma Train has qualified for the Diddle Cup playoffs. Jim Blossoms, your victor. That is incredible. What a damn victory. When he drove up to the front, he just was untouchable. He just, he gets the extra five points for leading the most laps. He gets a big victory. Gentlemen, I believe uh, if you check the Discord, looks like they, looks like uh, Jim Blossoms himself has just loaded us a pre-recorded victory statement if you gentlemen would like to play. All, all, all right, I'll uh, go ahead and, and look into that in just a second. We're seeing uh, Giacomo Giacomo. He got a good third place right. finish. Paul Walker, great finish in second. Big Daddy Tippado in fourth. Stumpy Lane in fifth. Ricky Walton, Walton, Fat Daryl, El Matador Toto Rosanna, Jean Paul Henri and Petrol top off that rounds out your top 10 with Winchester Wuba Bala 542 Norman. Good run for Norman. 13th place. Paul Alcohol in 14th. Yeah. Enios Barina nice. in 15th and Jeff Gordon the Horse in 16th. As we are seeing, yep, we're going to go ahead and um, I understand that uh, we've got, uh, yeah, they've already taken, uh, oh man, I guess that race just must have taken it all out of, uh, all out of Jim Blossoms. He is, uh, well, he is just uh, plum tuckered out, and uh, he is, uh, yeah, he is going to go ahead, and uh, I guess we've got ourselves a statement. Let me go ahead, and uh, I'm not used to that. You know, usually we just kind of get a... Uh, yeah, that's right. Usually this would be about the time where I'd stroll on down out of the... Out of, you know, I, I don't... Again, seriously, what the hell was in that Santa Fist frosted? I have no idea. I don't understand. It's some vicious and mind altering. Damn, it must have been though. Some bitch. I have no idea. Well, anyway, um, all right. Well, okay. I got, I got the, uh, I got the, I got this here. Or should I just go ahead and, uh, should I go ahead and play it? Yes, yeah, play the tape. Here. I guess play it. Just all hit right. play. All right, I guess this case was given by, to me by his representative named Ryan, I think. All right. Dear Lloyd, Caroline Jarge informed me that you might be looking for someone to fill the production assistant position on the set of As the Paint Dries. Caroline witnessed my work on Ukla Blues, a soap opera filmed and broadcast on the Ukla campus. Caroline was the mentor of the program and encouraged my pursuit of production work beyond college. I feel that my experience on the set of Butler Blues and my degree in film have given me the necessary background to immediately function as a valuable member of your As The Paint Dries team. I have enclosed my resume for your review. I will try to contact you within the week to arrange an interview. Thank you for your time and consideration. Yours truly, Jim Blossoms. Well, All right, what? Go. In the hell? Did that have to do with that goddamn auto race? Did, did they load the wrong file? Did they, did they remember to thank his team, thank the sponsors, thank all the boys back down to the shop? I don't, I don't know. I mean, like it was definitely from him. I don't, I don't. I said sincerely, Jim Blossoms. Is he trying to get some extra work in this? I mean, you know, hey, you do you. You know, shoot your shot, man. But what in the hell? What was Uncle of Blues? What's sports? that about? Well, I'm plum confused here. I, I don't know. I don't understand it. Quite frankly, it scares me. But a lot uh, of things are scary about this place, man. Yeah, a lot of things. I, no I, doubt I think, about that. I think I think if anything, he needs to thank his new girlfriend, Lauren Ipsum. Apparently, Lauren Ipsum, the great uh man, I don't know. I don't she's understand. She's a great document designer. I bet she's got a great set of titties, man. Oh, I bet. Oh, no oh, doubt about man. that. Well, uh, it is, uh, that, gosh, that is, that uh, is quite a thing. We don't have any highlights to show you. Maybe we go ahead and, uh. I got, I want to lure him that Ipsum. I want to ip some of that lure him, if you know what I'm oh, I want to justify that paragraph. Hey, oh, man, you are, uh, something else, man. Something else. Well, I think we're going to try to find out what in the hell went and happened to Somali Van Vuren. I'm going to try to figure out what in the hell happened to him. He's racing just fine. He retired from the race at some point. 
Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think he may have just... Like, the car may have just died on him. And some people got into some contact with him. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it. It looks like... Uh, yeah, that's uh, that ain't looking too good for him. Um, oh. That explains why. I think the car just kind of failed on him. He had a good, uh, good qualifying run, too. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that as we head back. So this is... Samali Van Vuren in that KFC I-8, the Bones car. And, yeah, he just kind of lost speed right there. I think the car just failed on him. And I don't know if anybody... Oh, looks like somebody just kind of... Yeah, hold on a second. That looks like Cobb Salad coming around and getting himself a little piece of the action there. I don't know where he just went and came from. He just kind of materialized. Yeah, got involved, too. Oh, jeez. What the... Oh, man. He just kind of comes out of nowhere. Oh, Clips, Clips Vitale crypt off in that Grey Bits car. And I'm completely confused. I am baffled by that one. We're going to go ahead and look as well. And uh, I'm going to try to find out what in the hell happened to Smiley Van Buren. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up now. Hold up now. Y'all seen those? Oh, man. I mean, we picked the best part of Brooklyn to race in. I mean, granted, there ain't much of it. It's the, it's the damn prettiest out there. It sure is. I think they just try to find, like, I guess they tried to find where a tree grows here, and then they just kind of went with that. Oh, hell, I, I figured this out. They just put up some damn artificial trees up there, try and cover up the facade of Barclay Stadium off in the distance. No doubt about that. I wouldn't surprise me one bit if that was what was happening. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out what in the world happened to... Cobb Salad at this point. I think that might have just been our eyes playing tricks on us. I didn't see nothing at this point. I'm kind of watching before the race even starts. I want to see what in the world happened. Yeah, it looks like he maybe gotten... Did he get bumped or something? He might have gotten bumped uh, early on in the race. I don't even see... No, I don't even see what's going on here. Let me see if I can find something out here. He kind of brake checks, and I don't know. He just kind of took a turn wide and had some issues. Yeah, there's there ain't nothing there. There wasn't nothing there. Well, you know, there he is. Your official winner is Jim Blossoms. What a huge, uh, what a huge, what, what a, a huge, huge victory for the sport to bring Diddler Cup racing. You know, to this weird, bizarre city that I don't understand and may not even care to understand. I think that's kind of where I'm at. But, you know, to get it out here on such a big stage like this, we're in New York City. New York City! That's right. Well, we're going to be uh, we're gonna be moving out of New York City this oh, weekend on Sunday. We are heading ourselves to the, the land of Oktoberfest. Dirchfall, Germany. Oh, shit. Now, there we go. Poopenhausen. We are heading to D. Poopenhausen, a famous road course in Dirchfall, Germany, for the Reshart Code Brown Pants Shitter 400. Damn. Not gonna lie, I have no fucking clue what is gonna happen as we head to beautiful Deutschland. As you might know it, it's Germany. Dirchfall, Germany. Someone gonna shit themselves, probably. That's damn right. I mean, more so than usual. I cannot wait. It is gonna be a goddamn auto race. We hope you join us on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time as we head over to Germany. It's gonna be evening time over there in, in Europe as we uh, hit our flights. And, you know, I gotta say, they finally got us passports. You know, I, I was wondering... Lord, while we were having so much trouble traveling over into other countries, we never got passports. I never thought of that. It's because you need to bring Lloyd over there as your spirit animal, as your comfort animal, and that way he sits in your lap on the right, on the flight there. Well, actually, I'm hoping we get a bit of easier travel now that we actually have, you know, proper documentation, like some sort of a, some sort yeah. of a, a, a coward like yeah. would have. And then maybe, maybe this time I, I, I just won't remember to, you know, accidentally walk in with my 357 in there. That simple. It's that simple. So that's right. Well, it's been a goddamn auto race, Lord. I'm glad to have it's you back to normal yourself. Yes, for Lightning Lord Shivers. For Lightning Lord Shivers. For Beaumont Jenkins. My name is Chip Chapman. We will see you next time. This has been 
a goddamn auto race. That's been a goddamn auto race. It's been a goddamn auto race.